Polarization of light waves. Let's consider a plane electromagnetic wave whose electric field component is oscillating on the y-axis and magnetic field component is oscillating on the z-axis. So the electromagnetic wave travels with the speed of light in the uh, uh, positive x direction. So uh, the direction of polarization of this uh, electromagnetic wave is defined to be the direction in which the electric field is vibrating. So since the electric field is vibrating on the y-axis, we can say that this uh, plane wave is polarized in j-hat direction. So that's the direction of polarization. And now, <clears throat> if all directions of vibration from a wave source are possible, uh, then the electric field component can be in any direction. The resultant uh, electromagnetic radiation is said to be unpolarized. So we have the electric field ca that can oscillate in any direction, uh, including the out-of-plane direction, then we have an unpolarized electromagnetic wave. On the other hand, if the electric field vibrates in the same direction at all times, at a given point, the wave is said to be linearly polarized. So this is an example of a linearly polarized wave. The electric field a component of the electromagnetic wave always vibrates in the same direction at a given point. So it's linearly polarized. Okay. Uh, the plane that contains the electric field and the direction of propagation is called the plane of polarization. So uh, you can see here the electric field is vibrating on the y-axis and the uh, propagation direction is a positive x-direction. So the plane defined by the y-axis and x-axis, the xy plane is the plane of polarization for this electromagnetic wave. So... Um, now uh, we have several ways to polarize an electromagnetic wave so we will talk about the first two uh, in this lecture uh, the first method is polarization by selective absorption there is a special material it's called a polaroid which transmits waves whose electric field vibrates in a plane parallel to a certain direction and absorbs all others so uh, we have a uh, this disc made out of the uh, polaroid material so what happens when we have an unpolarized light that is incident on this wave is that the polarizer polarizes the incident light along its transmission axis so the component of electric field perpendicular to the transmission axis is completely absorbed and the component of the electric field transmitted by the analyzer, so this is our polarizer, this is our analyzer, is basically E0 cosine theta. So uh, where theta is the angle between the two transmission axes, the polarizer transmission axis and the analyzer transmission axis. So the electric field that uh, leaves out the uh, polarizer we call E0. Now you can see that this is now polarized in the direction of the transmission axis. That's the polarization direction. Now to change the polarization direction, the analyzer allows the component of the light parallel to its axis to pass. So we take the component of the electric field uh, on the transmission new transmission axis E0 cosine theta and the perpendicular component to this axis is completely absorbed. Now uh, since we have intensity varying as E max squared so remember intensity uh, is basically the, the average uh, power per perpendicular area which is given by the average value of the pointing vector 1 over mu 0 e cross p it was uh, proportional to the amplitude of the electric field squared e max squared and since the amplitude of this electric field is e0 cosine theta on this axis it will be uh, basically proportional to cosine squared theta so if we have an incident uh, intensity i max the transmitted intensity is i max cosine square theta so where theta is the angle between the uh, direction of polarization of the incident wave and the direction of the transmission axis in the 
uh, polarizer or analyzer. This is known as Malice Law. All right. Now, how about this unpolarized light? If it has an intensity I0, what would be the intensity of the light that goes through the polarizer? Well, in that case, we have to look at the average value of cosine squared theta. Cosine squared averaged over all possible angles between 0 and 2 pi gives us 1 over 2. How do we calculate the average value of a periodic function? We divide it by the period 1 over 2 pi integral 0 to 2 pi cosine squared theta d theta. This is something we have done uh, many times before. So the average value is 1 over 2. So the average value of this uh, I transmitted with basically why, why am I taking the average because all angles are possible uh, since all angles are possible uh, so the theta that I have defined here the uh, angle between the polarization direction and the transmission axis can take all possible values between 0 and 2 pi so this gives us 1 over 2 therefore the transmitted intensity that leaves the polarizer is I0 over 2 and if this is I0 over 2 then we have a, a well polarized wave um, that is leaving the polarizer now we have a single angle theta so we just multiply it by cosine squared theta using malice law when it reaches the analyzer so now the new intensity is i0 over 2 cosine squared theta so we discovered that half the intensity is lost when passing through an ideal polarizer with a single transmission axis as we can see here all right Another method to polarize a wave is polarization by reflection. Now, when an unpolarized light beam is reflected from a surface, the polarization of the reflected light depends on the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence is defined with respect to the normal to the surface. If theta i is zero, it will be unpolarized. So if it's retro reflection, it will be unpolarized. If theta i is positive, it will be partially polarized. As you can see here, uh, when we have an incident beam with an angle that is positive non-zero, uh, we, sure, we are sure that the reflected beam will be at least partially polarized. And you can see that the component uh, parallel to the surface perpendicular to the page is increasing and the same is true for the refracted beam we have a partial uh, polarization in the refracted beam now when the refracted beam is perpendicular to the reflected beam the reflected beam is completely polarized okay so you can see here uh, the reflected beam and refracted beam make a 90 degree angle uh, at a very special angle theta p we have reflected beam completely polarized the polarization direction the electric field component oscillating parallel to the surface perpendicular to the page and the refracted beam uh, is basically uh, not polarized in this case all right, so we can find what this angle is. Uh, the theta p plus 90 degrees plus theta 2, this should add up to 180 degrees. So theta 2 is 90 minus theta p. We can use Snell's law and 1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. So this is medium with index of refraction n1 and this is index of refraction n2. So n2 sine theta 2, theta 2 is 90 minus theta b sine 90 minus theta p, that's cosine theta p. So uh, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 cosine theta p. So theta 1 is theta p, what I have called theta p here. Uh, so n1 sine theta p is equal to n2 cosine theta p. That means tangent theta p is n2 over n1. So theta b is the polarizing angle. Uh, so that it's also called known as Brewster's angle. This causes complete polarization in the reflected beam. Uh, so when we have Brewster's angle, uh, tangent of this angle is the ratio of the e index indices of refraction n2 over n1 now since n depends on the wavelength because of dispersion uh, theta p value also depends on the wavelength so this is an this is not a constant for n2 n1 it also depends on the uh, wavelength 
dependence of n2 and n1. Okay, so well, what does that imply in terms of the electrons at that surface? The oscillating electrons act as a dipole radiating light with a polarization parallel to the direction of oscillation. The radiation in the direction of the reflected beam only comes from oscillations perpendicular to the page parallel to the surface. So that is so we have a polarization perpendicular to the page parallel to the surface. That means electrons are oscillating uh, in this direction and re-radiating the uh, electromagnetic wave. Uh, so this has some applications in sunglasses, for example, the polarizing material with vertical transmission axes, this is uh, regarding Malice Law, uh, absorbs the strong horizontal component of the reflected light, reducing the glare. So as you can see in the polarization by selective absorption, we have a continuous decrease in the intensity of the incident light as they pass through um, polarizers with different angles therefore uh, if we have the polaroid material polarizing material uh, in our sunglasses with a vertical transmission axis uh, the strong horizontal component will be uh, of the reflected light will be absorbed and therefore we will see a reduction in the intensity of the light that hits our eyes so this will make it more comfortable for our eyes so that's a nice application of uh, polarization by uh, selective absorption so let's summarize what we said uh, we have talked about uh, polarization as the direct the direction of polarization as the direction in which the electric field component of an electromagnetic wave is oscillating an uh, incoherent source will produce unpolarized light with all possible angles uh, for electric field uh, if the electric field only uh, oscillates in a given direction at a given point, it's linearly polarized. Uh, the plane that contains the direction of polarization and the direction of propagation is called the plane of polarization. We talked about two methods to polarize. One is to use this polaroid material uh, that only transmits waves uh, with electric field vibrating in the transmission axis direction. Um, and absorbs all the perpendicular components and we have seen that because this means we're taking a projection of the electric field onto that axis uh, the intensity transmitted by such a material is proportional to cosine square of the angle between the direction of polarization and the direction of the transmission axis known as Malice Law for an unpolarized light where all possible angles uh, all theta angles between 0 and 2 pi are possible we take the average value of cosine square theta that gives us one half so we have a, re a re reduction by half but, uh, as a non-polarized light passes through a polarizer and we talked about an application in sunglasses now for light reflected from a surface coming from a medium with index of refraction and one to a medium of index of uh, refraction and two uh, we have, um, depending on the angle of incidence, a different behavior in the reflected beam. If the angle of incidence is zero, it's unpolarized. If it's greater than zero but less than the polarizing angle, it's partially polarized. The reflected beam is completely polarized if we are at the polarizing angle. And the polarizing angle is given by tangent theta p equals n2 over n1. It's known as Brewster's angle, which also depends on the wavelength. And the polarization direction is uh, parallel to the reflecting surface perpendicular to the page.